Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we are going to be making handmade soaps. So what I'm going to be making today is an oatmeal and honey soap. I have already cut and cubed my soap base. I use a goat milk soap base, melt and pour, and I just find that's easiest for me. Um, I really don't have time to be um, dealing with um, lye and things, so I just like doing it like this. And I've been selling my soaps, and my customers are really loving um, the quality and texture of my soaps. So, what I do first is I got these measuring cups at the dollar store. And I will just put my soap in. Then I will microwave this um, for 20 seconds at a time until it is melted. So I'll be right back. So I have it nice and melted. The first ingredient I use is a little bentonite clay. And this just kind of adds texture and moisture to the soap. Another clay I like to use is the kaolin clay. And again, I just use this for moisture and to add um, softness to the soap. And I just generally use a little teaspoon per two batches of soap. So I'm just stirring that in really well. And then I like to use coconut oil. And so I have a little bit of coconut oil melted. And again, this just adds texture. This soap is a very mild, soft soap. Um, a lot of my customers buy this for their babies or if they have sensitive skin. So I'm just going to continue to stir that. So next is putting the honey in. And I just like to add a generous amount. And honey is great for the skin. It is a mild antibacterial and it adds a honey scent to the soap. So I added the honey and now I'm just going to stir that in as well. And next I add the oats. And I just eyeball it and it kind of melts it kind of softens in the soap, so you just want to make sure that you're mixing it well so it gets mixed through the soap. So I add about, I would say maybe a half of a cup to two bars of soap. Just mixing it really well. And that is the oatmeal soap. So I got these molds at Michael's and they were in the dollar section. And they're about an inch tall and about three inches long. And I do not fill them all the way. Um, it really does make for a thick bar of soap and I find how I package my soap. I like them a little thinner. So now I have two to fill. And so I'll, I fill the first one about halfway and then I fill the second one and I just go back and forth. And the oatmeal soaps generally are one of my thickest soaps. 
So you get a lot of soap with my oatmeal soaps. So those look good to me. And now what I like to do, I have just a spray bottle of rubbing alcohol. And I'll just spray the tops to get rid of any air bubbles or any imperfections in the soap. And then I top the soap off with a little bit of oatmeal. Right on the top. And it sinks into the soap, but it really makes it look pretty on top. Then I'll go ahead and spray it one more time. The thing I like about melt and pour soaps is there's no real waiting time. With um, cold process soaps, you do need to let the soap cure and about two to three weeks and things like that and you need to wait. But with melt and pour soap, I just put these actually in my freezer for about an hour, let them firm up and get hard then I take them out and package them so I'm gonna go stick these in the freezer and I'll be back when they are done so I'm back and here is the finished soap and I'll just get it out of the molds and they actually pop out quite easily but this is my oatmeal and honey soap. And so I have a customer who ordered one of these soaps. So now I'm going to show you how I package them. So what I use to package my soaps is kind of I was just trying to find a cost effective way to package my soaps. So I found this, this is actually contact paper that you maybe would use in your cabinets or in your utensil drawers. But I find it is perfect material to package soap in. It is like a rubber consistency and so when I package the soap, the customer can use this in the shower or in the bathtub and it will absorb the moisture from the soap and keep your soap dry when you're not using it. Um, it will not let it stay wet or damp. It has little holes in it. I don't know if you can see, but it lets air circulate through. The soap does stay dry and you'll just want to store it in a nice dry area until the next time you use it. So I already have a piece cut out and I just cut along the edge to make it look nice and straight and crisp. And then I just take my soap and it's a perfect size as you can see and then I just wrap it so it will look like this and so the part of it is showing so the customer can see kind of what it looks like and so they can smell it and then I'll use one of my labels. And I have designed these on Photoshop and I just get them printed at my local Office Depot. And so I have an oats and honey label here and I just take it off. And then I just line the label up so it is nice and straight. And then that is the finished product. And so again, 
I have a customer. They ordered one bar of oat and honey soap. And so I think that they will be very happy with us. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial video. I will be making some more soap in the future. Um, I make rose soap and I make rose and clay. I make lavender. I make lavender and sage. I make a poppy seed soap, an orange and clove soap, a lemon soap, and a peppermint tea soap, and an activated charcoal soap. So go ahead and stay tuned. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. I just wanted to remind you, I do have an Etsy shop where you can purchase these soaps yourself. I have a lot of varieties, and so I will leave that link in the description below. Please go check it out. And I also make jewelry. I make earrings and necklaces. And I'll be doing a tutorial on those soon as well. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.